Breaking news has just come in from the Washington Post, shedding light on a significant twist in the ongoing legal saga surrounding former President Donald Trump. According to this latest report, Trump has once again gone against the grain, rejecting the counsel of his legal team, a move that could have profound implications for his legal predicament. At the heart of this story is Trump's possession of classified documents, a matter that has been under scrutiny since federal authorities executed a search warrant at his Florida residence. During this operation, an astonishing haul of documents, including 100 classified items and thousands of other government files, was seized by the FBI. In the wake of this seizure, it was widely anticipated that Trump's legal team would seek a settlement with the Justice Department rather than subjecting themselves to a drawn-out and potentially damaging trial. This expectation was not unfounded, given that settlement talks are common in high-profile cases, especially those involving classified information. A pivotal figure in this legal drama is attorney Christopher Kies, who explored the possibility of reaching a settlement with the Justice Department on Trump's behalf. The hope underlying this move was that Attorney General Merrick Garland and his department would seek an exit strategy to avoid prosecuting a former president. However, Trump firmly rejected this approach, disregarding repeated advice from both his legal team and advisors who advocated for cooperation. Instead, it seemed that Trump was influenced by the counsel of Tom Fitton, a prominent figure at the helm of the conservative group Judicial Watch, among others. Fitton's sway over Trump's decisions is a noteworthy aspect of this narrative, as he appeared to hold Trump's ear, even in the face of dissent from some of Trump's legal advisors. During subsequent grand jury questioning, Fitton confirmed that he had indeed provided advice to Trump, although the specific details of these conversations remained undisclosed. One of the underlying reasons for Trump's unwavering stance in this matter appears to be his firm belief that his residence would never be subject to search, allowing him to confidently retain the documents in question. However, his confidence was shattered when he was arrested and subsequently arraigned on a substantial 37-count indictment, including alleged violations of the Espionage Act. This turn of events prompted notable figures from Trump's inner circle, including General John Kelly, his longest-serving chief of staff, to express their astonishment. Kelly, in particular, conveyed that this was the first time he had ever seen Trump held accountable for his actions, underscoring the gravity of the situation. Former Vice President Mike Pence, who had been placed in a deeply compromising position by Trump's earlier urging to take actions to overturn the presidential election, made it clear that he could not defend the allegations, particularly those related to national security concerns. Even Trump's last Senate confirmed Attorney General weighed in, critiquing the defense arguments and emphasizing that the core issue at hand was obstruction of justice. Despite Trump's ardent supporters asserting that he is being unfairly treated, it is notable that the special conditions imposed on his release have been relatively lenient. For instance, Trump has retained his passport, and there appear to be no international travel limits or restrictions on his domestic travel, apart from a standard condition prohibiting travel outside the Southern District of Florida unless pre-approved by a court. This condition's fairness, or lack thereof, has raised eyebrows, as it differs significantly from what might be expected for any other defendant. Another intriguing facet of this story is the special condition barring communication with fact witnesses. However, it is worth noting that enforcing such a condition can be challenging, particularly given Trump's extensive network and potential influence. Within this unfolding drama, the role of Walt Nada, a former White House waiter turned co-defendant, takes center stage. Nada's journey from serving Trump to facing legal charges alongside him is emblematic of the complexity of this case. The Washington Post aptly raises the question of whether Nada will choose to cooperate with prosecutors in the hopes of securing a more lenient sentence, drawing parallels to the Watergate era, where individuals faced similar choices. Judge Aileen Mercedes Cannon's involvement adds another layer of intrigue. A Republican Cuban-American and member of the Federalist Society, her limited experience with criminal cases and past rulings have raised concerns about her impartiality. These concerns could potentially influence the trajectory of the case. As it stands, both sides in this legal battle are operating under the assumption that there is minimal risk of severe consequences for the defendants. This perceived lack of pressure significantly diminishes any incentive for NADA to cooperate with prosecutors.
Trump's implicit or explicit assurance of rewards for loyalty may further deter Nada from flipping. In this evolving legal drama, the stakes are undeniably high, and the decisions made by the key players, Trump, Nada, and even Judge Cannon, will have far-reaching consequences. The path to resolution remains uncertain, with numerous variables in play, making this a case of extraordinary interest and complexity.